What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we are diving into the final video of Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms spoilers. So spoiler season is supposed to be done today. I waited till the evening to make sure I got all of the cards for this one here today and I believe we have all of them. So we have a lot to talk about because a ton of stuff came out today. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this pretty quickly but every video has to start in the right place and we know that the best place to start is by meeting in a tavern. So you meet in a tavern for mana sorcery. This isn't the best card, but I thought it would be a fun one to start with. <laughs> but yeah, so sorcery, choose one, form a party, look at the top five cards of your library. You reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Uh, I actually think that's a pretty good one. So looking five deep, looking for any creatures within them. We've seen that same type of effect for in a three mana spell, but also having this additional effect of you could also just start a roll. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. I think that this kind of a card is something you throw in as a one or two of it has a, actually a ton of value uh this it's, it's uh something the stampede is the other version that's three mana that came out i think with ikoria and it's really good looking at so many cards deep grabbing every creature that's in it is a huge amount of card advantage as long as you're playing lots of creatures and so it's a four mana potentially drawing five cards and so that's a really, really good. It could also draw you one or two, and that's where it becomes a little bit worse. It's not quite collected company putting them out into the battlefield, but it is still pretty good, and you get to put creatures, get plus two, plus two. Okay, anyway, we can move on to the other good stuff here. Starting out with Minsk Beloved Ranger. I am really excited about this card. So three mana, three, three. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you create Boo, a legendary one, one red hamster creature token with trample and haste. That's right, it's a hamster. And you can pay X until the turn target creature you control. So the hamster gets base power toughness XX and becomes a giant in addition to its other types activated only as a sorcery. So unfortunately, you can only activate it as a sorcery. Otherwise, you could kind of you could pump Minsk as well if you wanted to, which you can still pump him up, uh, but you can't do it like as a combat strategy or anything like that. Uh, this is really sweet though. The one one hamster can become a massive giant. <laughs> they can swing it. And the and the thing that it has here is trample and haste, which means if you're top decking this like turn seven, turn eight, whatever, three mana to play Mint Scout, and then pay everything else into the hamster gets a hidden for like four or five points of damage in the late game is actually a really sweet play. So I'm actually a huge, huge fan of this card. I think it's going to be a really fun commander. I think it's a really good card in standard even. Just being able to pay three mana and have it come out <laughs> as a uh, you know for four power on the battlefield between two bodies is actually really good as well the biggest issue with this one right now is that a lot of the best lands that we have are not um they're not dual lands they are the the, the um pathway lands are one or the other and so getting to three colors is actually a little bit more difficult than, you, than it used to be uh the snarls definitely make it a little bit better but it's still not quite in the right realm the naya colors are a little bit hard to make that work with all right diving into the next stuff Next ones, uh, Limrith Desert Doom. Five mana, five, five dragon with flying. So really good stats already. It comes in and blocks uh, Goldspan Dragon, blocks a lot of other things like that. And it has a ward of four as long as it's untapped. So bring it out immediately is going to be really difficult to remove this, especially in a deck that's playing something like Goldspan Dragon, that kind of stuff. Typically won't be able to remove this. Uh, and then, excuse me, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. Then if you have fewer than three cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. So if you are empty handed, this hits in for damage, you get to draw a card and then you get to draw two more cards to get up to three cards in hand. So that's pretty sweet. There's not a time that you can get rid of your cards before uh, in between the drawing the first card and getting more. So the most you can ever draw with hitting in is three cards, but that's really, really good. It gets you up to at least three cards, which means you have a decent amount of chance of finding the things that you need in the situation, or at least something that's useful uh, going three cards deep. And so I am a big fan of this card. I actually think it's it's quite decent. Um, it's the word. I wish the word was for all of the time. Having it be only when it's untapped does make it less amazing, but also less uh, oppressive. I think this would be like up there in the same realm as, as uh, Dream Trawler a little bit if it if it was able to uh have that much ward all of the time so yeah we'll see anyway next one old Nawbone, seven mana seven seven with flying dragon whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player create that many treasure tokens so whenever it just deals a combat damage to a player that many creature tokens so if this hits in for seven points of damage i believe the way i'm reading it why did that go black for me 
All right, there you go. Sorry, my screen went black. It did not show up black on your other side. Sorry, that was really awkward. Anyway, create that many treasure tokens. That would be seven treasure tokens, which is a lot of treasure tokens. That's that's kind of a lot. Uh, I keep just thinking Revel and Riches. Revel and Riches is a five mana card from from Ixalan that if you have ten treasures at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to you win the game. Uh, I know that's probably not the best way to use treasures, but it sounds really fun. I'm just throwing that out there. All right. Next one, the Book of Exalted Deeds, three mana legendary artifact. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a three, three white angel creature token with flying, and then three mana tap it, exile Book of Exalted Deeds, put an enlightened counter on angel. It gains, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Activate only as a sorcery. This is really sweet, especially because there's already the gain three life uh, tribal deck that's already out there of gaining three life and then you get uh, the Griffin Airy, you get two, two, two Griffins or bring back uh, the skeleton from the graveyard or whatever else. There's a bunch of cards that want you to be gaining three life. And so that's only in standard for a little bit. I feel like this, this card really goes really well into that deck, especially because there's lots of angels that gain life and stuff too. And so being able to just First off, make angels with this. Having an angel that just says you can't lose the game is actually really good against a lot of decks out there too. And so I actually am a big fan of this card. I think it's good. I think it's potentially in the realm of, of a commander play too, just for the fact of not being able to lose the game is actually a big deal because there's so many combo decks out there, whatever else. This actually is a decent um, prevention card for those kinds of things. And so I, I like it a lot. Sorry, I'm having a hard time breathing right now. Sorry, guys. Uh, next up is Westgate Regent. Five mana, four, four, flying ward. You can discard a card. Uh, so the opponent has to discard a card in order to remove this. So if they only have one card in hand, they top deck like a removal spell, they won't be able to kill this. They have to have two cards in hand to actually kill Westgate Regent, which is actually really, really good. So if you're playing discard deck with Westgate Regent, it's actually terrifying because the rest of it says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus and plus encounters on it. So if it deals four points of damage, then you get four counters onto it. It's an eight, eight by turn, turn seven, I guess, which I mean, is later in the game. It's going to be a little bit difficult to get to that point. But at the same time, that's a really big threat An eight, eight by turn seven. And then it's a 16, 16 potentially uh, by turn eight. I that's i don't know about you guys but i'm terrified of that <laughs> i think it's actually a really good card uh i'm not sure like so we've we've seen doom whisperer be a really good card at five mana slot where it, it's uh it doesn't have any word effect like any any hex proof type of effect to it but just is a six six with flying and trample or it's a really big card that kind of thing where it's a really good effect but this can become much bigger within a turn or two and i think can be even more scary and having that semi hex proof uh or, or at least having them have to do two for wanting themselves with this is really powerful so i like this card a lot wizard spellbook seven mana artifact tapped exile uh, exile target insert a sorcery card from a graveyard roll a d20 activate only as a sorcery one through nine you get to copy that card you may cast the copy uh 10 through nine copy that card you may cast a copy by paying one rather than paying its mana cost so that's really really sweet and then if you get the 20 copy each card exiled with wizard's spell book you may cast any number of copies without paying their mana costs so this does activate every single turn it is seven mana so it's not like you're going to get tons of activations but in a really long game you have a chance of just exiling a bunch of cards even if you don't have the mana to cast the copy right away just any instant sorceries that are in the graveyard you have a chance to either getting them for one mana uh or be able to cast them and then occasionally you're going to hit the 20 slot the 21 uh and you just get to cast all of them without paying their mana costs and that's just going to be really sweet and so i actually i do like this card i'm not sure how powerful it is uh just because of the seven mana slot like i, I think that it being at seven mana that's typically when you're wanting to try to win the game or whatever and this is more like and eh, we're going to prolong the game even longer and that's what i don't like about it i think that if, if if this was at five mana or six mana it would be really playable at seven mana probably not uh but it is really fun and then treasure vault sorry for the art on this one this was came from the email out to all the people treasure vault artifact land uh tap to add colorless mana and you can pay xx and tap uh and tap and sacrifice treasure vault to create x treasure tokens so it, it's it's still a lot of mana to actually this on to create that many treasure tokens um but 
if you have if you're really just needing to make treasure or you can do this at instant speed which is nice so if you just left up a ton of mana from something you can make a bunch of treasure tokens and save that mana for the next turn and so i do like this one especially if there's something with artifacts where you're needing something like that there there still is uh, all that glitters and and cards like that that do want want this and it's an artifact land as well so it actually counts towards the artifact side of things itself and so that I actually uh, I think makes this a pretty decent card. I think because it's an artifact land and makes a bunch of other artifacts, any artifact synergy deck wants this kind of thing. And then any kind of ramping deck that occasionally will be wanting to hold up mana for something and then just dump it into something else uh, to make sure that they have extra mana in the future. This fits into that really well. So, all right, let's dive into some new types of cards. This is the a new type of enchantment uh, into the class cards. And I hope that we see more of this in the future. Uh, I really like the ones we got here so far, and they're really sweet. We have a ton of these to cover. So here we go. First one, I'm just going to dive into what this means, how everything works based on what I've seen it, and we'll dive into it. So Barbarian class one mana and it comes out it's not a saga so don't think of this as a saga but if you would roll one or more dice instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest lowest roll so we've already seen an effect like that before in blue we have it now in red it's one mana which makes this actually very very powerful and then to gain the next level uh you can only gain the next level as a sorcery to add its ability so it gets added to everything else in this so you can pay two mana uh, and then you get up to level two. So as a sorcery, so play this out Barbarian class, you can do it the same turn or later turn if you have the mana, pay two to get up to the next level. Then it says whenever you roll a die, one or more dice, target creature you control gets plus two plus zone gains menace until end of turn. And then if you pay three more, you get to level three, creatures you control have haste. So pretty sweet stuff. Uh, it's six mana card to be able to get up to the everything having haste, which we've seen that kind of effect being at like, typically it's like before between four to five mana for some Something like that but having all the other abilities on this too makes it pretty interesting and cool uh but it is just a static effect of getting haste which actually isn't the worst uh, i think perforos is the other card that's in standard right now that gives haste and that's at five mana and so somewhat comparable to that especially because you can do it over multiple turns and only do it if you actually actually need it but in the late game if you're just wanting to turn all your creatures in to make sure that your stompy boy uh you know bone crusher giant can have haste you pay three mana at sorcery speed and then play it out and now uh stompy boy has has haste which is actually pretty good and so i i like it we'll see anyway other ones we're gonna dive into lots of these paladin class one mana spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more to cast three uh pay three creatures you control get plus one plus one pay five and whenever you attack until end of turn target attacking creature gets plus one plus one for each other attacking creature and gains double strike if you have flyers with this it's actually a pretty scary card for flyers uh and so i i think it's pretty good so three mana is the typical amount that you're paying for creatures as a static effect getting plus one plus one uh and so that actually fits in with that you have to pay the one beforehand and that ability we've only kind of seen that same ability on uh tithe taker uh it was a two mana white spell from dominary i believe uh no it was it was it was ravnica uh that had afterlife of one as well and it had the same ability spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more to cast uh and so it actually was a pretty good hate card on a lot of stuff like a lot of people are wanting to hold up uh, removal spell that kind of stuff so you can play this out before playing out a really good creature if they're if they're holding up mana they now don't have the ability to cast their their heartless act or whatever else that kind of thing and it, and it just slows them down an extra turn which actually is a really big deal it means they took up an entire turn even if they do end up still re removing it this still gets some value out of it so i i don't think you play these class cards unless you are really okay with the first ability being somewhat good enough and then or having a really big plan to make sure you get to the the other ones and so the the level three effect i think is awesome but remember that is eight mana away over the course of how many turns you know or, or three turns away from that actually being effect but if you have a flyer and a few flyers on the battlefield getting plus one plus one and it'll already have the plus one from before and getting double strike is a, a probably you just won the game so it's a pretty good good effect Ranger class, two mana. 
When Ranger class enters the battlefield, create a 2 2 green wolf creature token. So, already a 2 mana for 2 2. Uh, and then you can pay 2 whenever you attack, put a plus and plus encounter on target attacking creature. So, for 4 mana, you get a 3 3 and then a 4 4 5 5. And so, that's already decent stats, not amazing, but decent, especially because it stays on the battlefield and creatures in the future will still have that effect. So, I, I actually think the mana value is actually quite right for that. 4 mana, you may look at the top card of your library anytime you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. So, we've had that effect uh vizier of the many i can't remember vizier of something from um Amonkhet was a four mana creature that had that effect at level three and so this one is actually perfectly in line for the for the mana value that you can get out of it i i think that uh there's a lot of good stuff that goes th with this one i think that any kind of any kind of thing that can bring permanence back from the battlefield or permanence that you're okay sacrificing that kind of thing uh i think ranger class actually becomes a really good one it it the effect of putting plus encounters onto creatures stands through a board wipe uh being able to look at the top card of your library if you are just drawing dead or whatever in the late game you know pay pay for mana all of a sudden you can be looking at the top card of your library so this i think goes into mono green snoppy decks pretty easily the the question is how many how many copies of it if it's one two or four or something like that i think it's i'm guessing it's probably two and it would probably be really good two of wizard class one mana you have no maximum hand size already a pretty good card there three mana whenever when this class becomes level two draw two cards and so four mana to draw two cards already pretty decent sorcery speed though uh five mana whenever you draw a card put a plus and plus counter on target creature you control so anytime you draw a card put a counters onto something i do believe that there's a way to go infinite with that effect and uh benthic biomancer uh to be able to draw a card put counter onto it um and every time a counter is put onto it you get to draw another card so you keep putting counters onto it so there is an infinite loop i believe with that one uh and so interesting i think that uh, there, that's just a two card combo but this is also eight mana to get to that two card combo I, i'm not sure if that quite fits in the same realm <laughs> but that is pretty sweet stuff all right next one warlock class black mana at the beginning of your end step if a creature died this turn each opponent loses one life um i actually like that effect just by itself so it's only at the end of the turn, only it triggers one time, but if a creature died this turn, if you are an aristocrat title deck that's wanting to kill off your creatures or sacrifice something every once in a while, and already going off with, uh, you know, Bastion, Bastions uh, of whatever, that the one that deals damage any time that something dies, uh, if you have multiple of these, you know, like one or two of them, that's two points of damage a turn. Uh, and like three, all of a sudden that's a bolt every turn just by having something that you want to have happen anyway. And so I actually think Warlight Class, just for the, the first step, is pretty good. Two mana, level up, level two. When this class becomes level two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, rest into your graveyard. So three mana, you can start filling your graveyard a little bit. Uh, seven mana, level three at the beginning of your end step. Each opponent loses life equal to the, the life they lost this turn that's a really big one so it's a lot of mana nine mana to get to the the effect but that's a massive effect at the beginning of your end step each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn so if you hit in for five damage at the end of turn they will lose five more damage or like five more life that's really 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 good and so i'm a huge fan of warlock class uh intrigued to see where that one goes uh Sorcerer class, two mana. Whenever the Sorcerer class enters the battlefield, draw two cards and discard two cards. Uh, so Faithless, Faithless Looting effect for two mana that has other stuff on it, really powerful. Two mana level up. Uh, creatures you control have tapped to add blue or red, spend this mana only to cast an insert or sorcery spell or to gain a class level. So that can add up to the other class things that you have. If you have a way to make a lot of tokens or whatever, if you're playing like the class class tribal deck or whatever uh and ways to make tokens whatever that actually could end up adding up to getting to like the, the last effect a little bit faster getting up to something like this could be a way to play like a grixis version or something i don't know it could be good uh five mana level up whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant or sorcery spells you've cast this turn that is really good and so there's a lot of different ways to go with this but i think that this card fits better into like a phoenix tribal deck or like the the where you're casting a bunch of one to two mana spells uh type of is it deck with the sprite dragon whatever uh is actually really powerful every time you cast one or two spells you cast a shock deals a damage plus itself and then uh you know spike field hazard or something like that any other one mana spell all of a sudden becomes like extra damage and that becomes three three points of damage four points of damage like whatever 
it's really good and so i i actually the, the i'm really not sure how good these are because that's still seven mana away from being good but it is also kind of good so it's it's, it's interesting Rogue class, two mana. Whenever you a uh, creature you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library face down. You may look for it. Uh, you may look at it for as long as it remains exiled. Um, yeah. So whenever creature you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. So you just get to exile the, the library. I can look at the 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 exiled one. So they don't get get it anymore. But we also don't get it uh, until the later ones. So level two, three mana creatures you control have menace, and then level four you may play cards exiled with rogue class. Which, by the way, the the first abilities stay going no matter as long as this is on the battlefield. So anytime you deal damage, you still get the exile stuff and giving them menace and stuff is just useful um, to make that happen. And then you may spend mana as though any mana of any color to cast those spells. So this is like a really slow. Um, what, what's the what's the card? Uh, there, there was the three mana thief that would hit the hit hit someone's face and be able to just steal a card from it and be able to cast it whenever they want it whenever you wanted to this is the same kind of a card but it just like stays on the battlefield it's harder to kill and anything that does get into damage if you ever just you know pay the mana you also need to have maybe three cards from earlier in the game which is pretty sweet this these are like have like a static of thing because i don't have any sound going to them right now that's just really weird. I, I usually just wear those because it helps uh, make my hair not look as funky sometimes and it drowns out the kids on the back. So those are going off right now. Monk class, two mana. The second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. Um, interesting. I'm not really sure how useful that is. That could be very useful though. Uh, two mana level two, whenever you cast, uh, whenever this class becomes level two, return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So it can return something of your own, uh, something of opponents. So four mana to bounce something, not amazing, but you still get the effect of having stuff cost a little bit less. And then three at the beginning of your upkeep exile the top card of your library for as long as it remains exiled it has you may cast this card from exile as long as you cast another spell this turn so they it's i don't think it's just until end of turn right so as long as it remains exiled you have that ability of you have to cast something else and then cast that so it's meant for a lot of cheaper spells but I, I'm not really sure where where I'd play this card, but I feel like there's a deck that absolutely fits perfect for it. I just don't know it. Um, I, honestly, a bunch of a bunch of like um, flyer a flyers deck would probably work pretty well with this, where you can get a little bit cheaper flyers uh, for the second spell coming out. Uh, you can bounce something if you need to, uh, and then be able to just have a bunch of extra cards in the late game if you need it to be able to cast a bunch of extra things there could be really really good but only one extra one every turn if it's the second card you cast that one so i, I don't know all right fighter class two mana whenever this enters battlefield search your library for an equipment card reveal it put into your hand then shuffle uh so that's nice just a tutor effect for equipment already pretty decent because there are some equipment uh, that are that are necessary to get uh three mana equip abilities you activate cost two less to activate which is actually pretty good five mana whenever because a lot of a lot of equipment uh a activated abilities are two and so if this is two less they are just free to equip uh which is actually a really big deal and i think there are probably some ways to make an infinite combo loop with just that i'm interested to see what they are uh five mana whenever a creature you control attacks up to one target creature uh blocks it this combat if able i'm not sure if i like that because um so it's up to one target creature you so you can you can not choose a creature to block your your stuff um but if you want to swing it with a big hit but they have like a death touch creature you can have it block the one one that you're swinging in with and force it to block that one and then everything else attacks in okay so it is a pretty good effect i think the way you look at these these final effects is like you want to spend that mana on the turn that you're about to win or something like that like if, if it's just the thing that extra thing that you need to make get yourself through but you want to play this with the value of the first two levels because that's what's actually the most probable to happen and then level three is like ah uh, every once in a while that'll be really useful for us and i think this fits in within that i think you play it because you're trying to tutor up an equipment getting getting an ember cleave is still actually really powerful just guaranteeing that you can get the ember cleave is pretty sweet uh and then any other equipment abilities i think that having the equip cost cost less can actually be a pretty decent effect i'm not exactly sure uh but anyway we'll see i think that brings us to the end of the class cards uh and so the class cards i think are really cool um again I, i'm all of them are really really cool but i'm not sure how powerful they're actually going to be because of how expensive it is mind flare five mana three three horror 
Dominate Monster. When Mind Flayer enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature for as long as you control Mind Flayer. At three power and toughness, it does die to a lot of things, but it also doesn't die to stomp. It doesn't die to everything out there. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst at least has to sp spend a little bit more for it, that kind of stuff. And so I, I think this is a decent card. Um, just gaining control of it and you get to keep control of it for five mana. I really like the design of this one. Uh, this is something that you can reanimate uh, if need be or whatever. And so at five mana, I don't think you need to be reanimating this quite like Agent of Treachery was needed to or, or something or anything else like that. But just the fact that you can come in and take control of a creature is pretty nice. Uh, the reason why... Um, Agent of Treachery was so powerful, though, is that it could still land. It could still any permanent that they controlled, which is just busted. And so I I like this card. Uh, I, I think it'll be a really annoying card in a lot of decks. But as soon as it dies, they get the creature back. Even if it was in combat, it kind of goes back to their hand tapped, to, to, to their control tapped and not attacking them, I believe. Um, and so anyway, we'll see. Magic Missile, uh, three mana, sorcery. Uh, I like the flavor of this one. Just the spell is really nice. Uh, and actually decent if it was instant at sorcerer speed I'm, I'm in between on this one it can't be countered and it deals three damage about as you choose among one two or three targets so just the fact the only thing that's different on this one versus other things that we've seen is that it can't be countered um which actually can be nice if it was instant speed it would be a pretty decent card anyway moving on to the next ones uh gretchen titch willow two mana zero four Four mana to draw a card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I, I think at four mana, that's a little bit too expensive, but we've seen the, the ability of, it's the Uro ability for four mana instead of three mana. Uh, and we've already seen that three mana, having Uro come happen over and over again is pretty good. Uh, being a zero four is actually a really good blocker against a lot of decks, and so that's decent. Um, I think that if you can give it, uh, if you can have ways to have the, the activated ability cost less, two mana to draw a card so like if you have a zerda or something like that if you if it's two mana to draw a card and put a land card on the battlefield actually pretty decent to be able to activate that over and over and over again on a turn uh could be pretty busted and so i like it uh i'm not sure if it'll actually see play just because it's a two mana do nothing like you you have to force to, to spend more later instead of the two mana like that that initial two mana that you have to spend for nothing is what kills this card um but it, it could be decent Kalein Reclusive Painter, two mana, one, two. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Anything that enters the battlefield on two mana and creates a treasure token is really, really powerful. Uh, just because the reason why it, it's is because that treasure can be used immediately. So it's basically a one mana spell. Um, and so it, this becomes a much more powerful card to an extent uh and so i i'm a big fan of these kinds of cards uh, we, we've seen that we've seen that with goblin um wily goblin was the first one that's ever really had it we saw how powerful that was being a two two red mana card for any goblin deck and, and how much how much it got played having this with just other effects just makes this really exciting all right and so the other stuff whenever uh, other creatures in control enter battlefield with additional plus and plus encounter on it for each mana from a treasure uh spent to cast them uh and so already uh with this this comes out with two mana and as a one two creates a treasure token and then you immediately have a, the treasure um to be able to cast the one drop uh, if you have treasures for maybe something else, I'm, I'm not sure if you would on turn two, but maybe later in the game, you can spend and immediately be able to cast something out with quite a few counters onto it potentially. But even just a one drop with an extra counter on it, it's pretty good. I mean, like uh, Fervent Champion or the, yeah, or, or what's the, yeah, I think it's Fervent Champion. Uh, with first strike being able to get a little bit extra buff and toughness uh, gets through a lot of stuff on turn two that would be a really powerful play so i'm intrigued to see uh what decks come out of this one if it's actually worth coming in over other stuff but i mean anytime you can cast empty your hand fast that's really really good and so i actually really like this a lot guardian of faith three mana spirit knight three two with flash and vigilance when it enters battlefield any number of target creatures you control phase out uh and that includes itself so you can phase it out uh quick note whenever things are phased out they don't re-enter the battlefield they don't have another etb effect or anything like that they just they're phased out they go out for for the time and that's good so the reason why you would play this out and phase them out is Number one, to protect something that you have from removal. So if, if someone is removing a creature you really want, you held up three mana, flashes in, it has flash and vigilance, so it can block something pretty well. And it's it's a decent, I like the, the stat line and everything like that is really good. Uh, but the other thing is you go to block all their stuff after a really big swing, you, fly, you phase everything out and 
that's good. So uh, anything attached to them, um, so yeah, it's treat them and anything attached to them as though they don't exist until their next turn. So I, that's actually good to know too that the equipment and art and um, auras will actually go out with them. Uh, but it also means that you wouldn't be able to like move over a an ember cleave or anything on that. I actually didn't know that rolling on that until I saw that. So that's actually really nice to know. All right, uh, bag of holding. This was a, a reprint from I don't remember which set, but it was really good. I think when it was in standard, I think it's out of standard now. Uh, yeah, it is one mana artifact. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard, and you can pay two to tap it to draw a card and then discard a card. It actually might still be in standard. There's just a lot like Maze Mind Tome has typically been used more than this, but there's a lot of cards where a lot of decks where you are discarding cards like the like the um which is whatever the class was uh wizards class or sorcerer's class where you draw two cards and discard two cards you would technically still have the ability to play those two cards uh because the four number uh for four men you can tap this sacrifice that return all cards exiled from with bag of holding to their owner's hand so anything that gets discarded you all of a sudden have the ability to have that in hand again, which is actually really, really good. Be able to draw a card and discard a card. Uh, and so it, it is really nice. It only works for the cards that are exiled with this particular bag of holding, not a future bag of holding. Uh, and so if you were to discard a card, you actually, I think you choose which ones they go to or they separate. Like if you were to discard two cards and had two bags of holdings, I believe one goes to each one um, automatically. I, I don't know how all of that exactly works. Uh, I, I Other than what happened on Arena last time that I've played this which has been a while so anyway i i think it's a good card uh, exciting to see it come back uh lurking roper and a very interesting card here a three mana four five which is quite powerful it does not untap during your untap step but whenever you gain life untap lurking roper so if you're gaining lots of life in your deck then this is a four a three mana four five with vigilance so that's already really powerful we've already seen that with uh famish paladin but we've what we've also seen with famish paladin uh from ixalan is that the ability to have it untap whenever you gain life creates some really interesting uh, infinite combos. Basically, uh, Sorcerer's, Sorcerer's Wand is the main one that does it. Um, it says whenever you tap, uh, you can tap this creature to deal one damage to uh, opponent or any target. I can't remember. I think it's to opponent. And if you give it lifelink, it will gain life as it deals damage and then untap itself. And then you can tap it again, deal one damage, gains life. So any way they can give this lifelink and have that kind of effect on it, you win the game uh so that's that's really cool that it's just a three mana four five a really good blocker really you know really good effect in general that is in a redundancy for that combo actually makes me think that that combo is going to be you know more likely to have happen so i i'm actually quite excited about that one uh and also the the fighter class that also has the equip cost cost a little bit less can actually be interesting because that's the biggest issue with that deck is that sorcerer's one is expensive to equip uh and so there's already a few cards that make that deck a little bit more interesting interesting to me uh and anyway this this one i think is a, a good card a good combo effect um and we'll see how it goes zorn three mana three two if you would create one or more treasure tokens instead create those tokens plus an additional treasure token so anytime you're creating treasure tokens instead create that many more treasure tokens and then with uh, the the uh, knobbone uh, old knobbone dragon uh, from earlier whenever something deals damage you create that many treasure tokens and then make double of those tokens and then if you had uh, <laughs> the anointed procession to make double of all tokens that would be made tokens of that's just a lot of treasure tokens I'm not sure what you do with all that mana but you you, you could do stuff and that's that's really cool so i think i think zord is pretty fun uh split the party five mana sorcery uh i thought this was just kind of interesting this is i believe the last one here uh choose target player return half uh the creatures they don't they control to their owner's hand and round it up i any of these like flavor cards there's actually a lot of common cards that have tons of flavor like this where it's it's really reminiscent of D and D and everything, and I think it's really fun. Uh, but yeah, so five mana, two target player, return half their creatures they control to their owner's hand. Um, it it sounds like you are the one that returns half their, half their cre uh, creatures. I'm not sure if they get to choose or if you get to choose. If you get to choose, that's actually a really powerful card for five mana. Um, it's set, it's six mana for just return all of their non-land permanents uh, at River's Rebuke mana, and so that's something that I, I'm not sure if it's quite powerful enough, but it can still be a, a good effect. And so round it up is pretty nice. 
that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this one i believe that's all of the cards let me know what your favorite card is from the set uh there's a lot of fun ones from this one guys and so i'm, I'm really excited for this set i'll be doing a lot of brews to kind of show up um uh, just different decks i think would be fun to play uh put some together so you guys can see what is a potential and so you guys know what to be playing as soon as it comes out on july 8th and if you guys want to send me any deck lists or any ideas or things you want me to build let me know, know in the comments down below uh uh, in the next few videos and i'll make sure to be looking at those and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much like subscribe and bye, -bye.